So you've probably heard that expression, put on your thinking cap. Well, guess what? Today, we're going to be putting on six different thinking caps. So I'm so excited you're here because I just love um, brainstorming processes, problem solving processes, how we can make better decisions. And this all impacts us in so many ways, not only when we go to, you know, formal IEP and ARD meetings, but using all our six thinking caps <laughs> can also help us when we are making decisions like where are we going to take our next family vacation? Or when you're having a discussion with your doctor about what, what next steps you need to take. So although we're going to be focused on using our thinking caps when we're at school meetings, know that this can apply to so many areas of your life. So I'm excited. Like I said, I love to talk about this topic. I'm Charmaine Tanner. If we haven't met before, I'm a parent, a retired teacher, an advocate, author of an Amazon number one best-selling book. And I come every Thursday on Facebook Live so we can have a conversation and we can, you know, have this back and forth and learn a lot from each other. So let's see. I, we already have some live viewers with us. Um, so Georgie from Australia says, yes, she'll need to view later. That's the thing we have um, <laughs> viewers from around the world. So um, picking one time that works, it's kind of challenging, but that's the nice thing. If you're watching in the replay, type replay. Um, if you're watching live, let us know. We want to have more conversations so you can type in questions and comments and I can come back to those and answer. So as we go through um, today's show, feel free to give a real life example and say, well, Charmaine, how could we problem solve this? Um, because I love doing that. So let's get ready to go here. So as I said, Using six different thinking hats can actually help us look at um, different issues in a lot of different perspectives. Now, one of the things that I did was um, I wrote in the description of our video, do you know which hats are used most often during IEP meetings, which colored hats? <laughs> Um, and so in a little bit, I'm going to be talking to you about the symbolism for each color of these thinking hats and how that helps us in this problem solving process. Um, and contrast that to what usually happens at um, school meetings. So stay tuned because we'll be learning about each one of those <laughs> six different colored hats. And like I said, the thing that I love is that this can be, this um, process can be applied to lots of different settings. Um, I think the one that would be really wonderful to share um, or to use this strategy is when you're, you know, you serve on a district committee and you're looking at how to make your school district inclusive or how teachers are going to embrace universal design for learning. Um, a process like this, where you look at the issue through all these different hats or lenses, <laughs> um, can be really helpful for making systemic change. Um, and Erica is with us live. Hey, Erica, nice to see you. Well, kind of see you, right? <laughs> Um, and so I just, I'm fascinated with this. Um, this is a, a process that Dr. Edward de Bono um, created and it's been researched, it's been proven um, to be very effective. It's also a program that people can get training in. So when I do the show notes for this broadcast, um, 
I'll put in there some resources if you want to learn more about the training, how to be a trained person. I'm not a trained person in the strategy, but I just think it's wonderful and that you'll love it. So um, in order to get the show notes, just type the word hats in the comments below. And um, I pull them together and write them and <laughs> fix them up and send them out to you every Tuesday morning. So next Tuesday morning in your email box, you'll get tons of resources about the six thinking hat strategy. That is from um, Dr. Edward Bono. Um, so let's go back here and we're going to start by talking about what typically happens when we are at um meetings and that's that spaghetti thinking <laughs> and um i think you can tell i'm a visual learner so i love visual representation of things that we're talking about so the no more spaghetti thinking and it's like okay what's spaghetti thinking um so you may have uh you know heard that expression like you know just throw spaghetti up on the wall and if it sticks it's right <laughs> if it's done <laughs> and so people are kind of like sometimes in iep meetings sometimes ideas are just kind of thrown out and we'll kind of see everybody's reaction and if it seems like people would be interested we might talk about it some more or spaghetti thinking can also be when um you're talking about goals for reading and one person is saying you know we don't even have a good reading curriculum here at the school to use i don't know how we're going to do this we don't have the resources and somebody else is saying well you know i don't know because we have to look at that but then we also have to consider the other kids and blah. and so you have all of these voices which are good but when everybody's kind of coming from a different perspective at the same time it's more like chaos um so and i guess i'm also a, i like things to be systematic um even though i have to have balance and have things go off that <laughs> but so i guess this kind of a process to be up front would probably um, lend itself to people who like thinking in the sequence and kind of having a step step process to go through. But also what I love about this six thinking hat process is it allows for creativity and it creates time and creativity and coming up with new ideas is like really valued in this process. And that's the part that I think is really missing in IEP meetings. We get so like, you know, robotic, like go from this box to this box, fill this out, check this, that we don't have any time for that creative thinking. So you can talk to, you know, the special ed teacher, whoever facilitates your IEP meetings. You can share some information about six hat thinking. <laughs> Um, or six thinking hats and see if this could be incorporated into your IEP or ARD meetings. Or the other thing is, this is a perfect planning session that you could do before the actual formal meeting. So you do have time blocked out for, you know, thinking outside of that IEP box. Um, so let me know if you have ever heard of, if you're familiar with um, Edward de Bono's six thinking hat strategy. So Rose is here with us. Hey, Rose. So she said hat. So yeah, that's um, a way that my bot should be responding to you, my IEP bot. <laughs> and um, then you'll get a link for getting all the show notes from today's episode. So <laughs> let's keep going as long as I got my hats on, right? Um, so let's go back here. So instead of that spaghetti thinking, we are going to change it up. As I said, Edward de Bono is the one that created this process. And what I love about that is that you do take on these different perspectives. 
Now, you don't have to actually wear hats while you're doing this, um, but it's just, it's a way, it's kind of, you know, a way for people to be focused. Um, so the whole idea is that you're going to start with the blue hat. So let me put my blue hat on. This is, can you tell I'm in Idaho? This is a Boise State Bronco hat. Um, so the facilitator of the meeting is going to wear the blue hat. Now, again, you don't have to have actual hats. <laughs> um, but the facilitator is the one that is going to help the process, um, make sure people stay on track. And when the blue hat comes out, <laughs> When you're thinking of this, you're going to be looking at the overview, kind of the big picture of why you're having this meeting. It could be an IEP meeting. It could be just, you know, a strategy meeting with the um, teachers and the and yourself as a parent. Um, but you want some, a lot of people want to start with that big picture. So the blue hat kind of gives you that. Um, and then as you go along, let's see here. Um, the, that facilitator is going to be asking specific questions. And I mean, they don't have to be worded exactly like this, but this is just to give you an idea. So they're going to be talking about where we are now. Um, what has happened so far? I always think it's important to talk about what has worked so far. Um, and what are we, what are we trying to do? What is our big kind of goal? Usually this, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, there's no strict timelines, but usually you only want to spend about five minutes at the beginning of an hour long meeting talking about that overview. Now, of course, if you're using this in an IEP process to do an overall is more like your present levels of performance and that really would take more than five minutes, right? Um, so you just have to kind of gauge it. But um, like I said, for most people, starting with the big picture helps. And then the red hat comes out. And what's nice is not only, like I said, the facilitator is kind of the blue hat person, <laughs> but when the blue hat is out, everybody is thinking that way okay so it's not just the facilitator that's saying where have we been and the facilitators answering everybody's using their own blue thinking hat and they're responding with how they see things going so then the next hat that comes out is the red hat i don't know what or who number 24 is but um the red hat is for get, getting to those kind of gut feelings, right? Um, and doing a check-in. Now, I really think the red hat part is really important. And one of the things that I offer to parents is start the meeting, you know, I mean, the blue hat's going to be, this is our agenda for the day, blah, blah, blah. But then the red hat is, let's go around the room and everyone share a couple of strengths of, you know, Nancy. Um, and that starts having people kind of get to that gut level and tap into their emotions. And that part is really important to recognize because we all have that part. And especially as a parent, um, we are really tapped into those emotions and at our gut level at so many meetings, right? Um, so if this sounds familiar to you, let me know in the comments. Um, so Rose is saying hi, that this is a new concept for her. Yeah. And it's like I said, I just, I just love it. I think it's really, really helpful in lots of ways. Um, so that red hat is going to be where we get to the gut feelings. How do I feel about this right now? Um, to me, like I said, I also want to focus on the emotions of what that person does well at school, what that student is like, you know, what we should be celebrating, um, because that takes away that kind of heaviness of, 
you know, this is kind of doom and gloom. Um, so Kimberly is with us too. Hey, Kimberly. And Angela is with us. So yeah, just type in hats if you want a copy of the show notes that we'll be sending out next Tuesday. Now, the next hat you're going to get is the white hat. And the white hat is for information or fact finding. So again, <laughs> you don't have to wear these hats. <laughs> um, but I mean, the facilitator can say, now we're going to switch and we're going to just, we're going to be talking and focus on information and fact finding. Um, and so everybody is going to be using that hat. So we're not going to be making judgments when we're sharing information, when we're wearing our white hat. Um, this is just, you know, from observations, from assessments, from, you know, what the student has to say and what their feedback is. So this is an informational gathering kind of. Um, and if you look at a model of an hour long meeting, the information part should take about 10 minutes. But again, I mean, all of this is flexible, right? Um, so if we go back here and look, so we see some of the questions that might be asked are what are the facts? What information um, do we need to still get? You know, things like that. Those are the things that you'll be talking about with the white hat. And then you're going to put on the yellow hat. Now the yellow hat symbolizes, besides the Pittsburgh Steelers, <laughs> The yellow hat, <laughs> how do I put this on? The yellow hat is thinking of the benefits. So, you know, you've kind of, you have some, you have some information um, and you want to start thinking like, well, you know, what are some, some of the things that we could do? What would be the benefits, the positive points of that? Um, so, at this time, everybody has their yellow thinking hat on and they're thinking of the benefits, the positive kinds of things. Um, and again, this would take <laughs> this would take about 10 minutes. Yay. <laughs> Rose is a Steeler fan too. Yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> and after, so we go here next. After the yellow hat discussion of the benefits, let's see. Then comes the green, oh, not the green hat. Next comes the black hat. And this is opposite, right? This is talking about, you know, some of the, um, you know, the downsides. So if you look at pros and cons, the black hat would represent the cons. Um, and this is really important. I need to get a drink of water here because sometimes we kind of bury the cons and then they come back to bite us. So we do want to have time when we're in like a problem solving meeting that we do put that black hat on and, you know, what are the roadblocks? What are some of the barriers? Um, are, are we sure we have the resources to do this? What about the time it's going to take? So you need to bring those things up because in reality, those things need to be addressed, right? And if you're going to be successful. So if you're on a district wide committee, if you're talking with school board members, trying to get a policy changed in your school district, um, you have to almost ahead of time, think about now when we're in this meeting, what are going to be some of the cons that are going to come up? And in the future, how can I use that information and know what their questions are, know what their fears are to then be proactive and come and address those? Um, so like I said, this can be used in so many ways, not just at IEP meetings, um, but <laughs> can you see me? They are, it is <laughs> very helpful. Um, and then after the black hat comes the green hat. So the green hat 
is thinking of even more new ideas. The um, what kinds of things would be possible? What you know, this is like where the big dreaming, where the big um, what if thinking goes on. And I don't drink Mountain Dew, but this is the only green hat I could find. <laughs> I guess if I was Paula Clues, I'd have a Packer hat. <laughs> Green is for creativity. And so again, when we're in this process, when we're trying to make a decision, when we're trying to resolve an issue, we want everybody at the same time to put their green hat on and be thinking of, you know, what if the library had wider aisles between the stacks of books. How could that help make this more accessible for everybody at school? You know, what if we could look at the schedule of always eating lunch first and then going to recess? Maybe the kids would prefer to go to recess and then eat lunch, or is there a way we can have both schedules? So use this in lots of different situations. Don't think of this as only a problem solving process for IEP or ARD meetings, okie dokie. So let me know in the comments, where do you think you could use this? Um, like I said, it can be used for like figuring out where you're gonna go on your next family vacation. Um, so let us know because I wanna see how you see this being applicable. Um, because that's the important part is that while you're hearing about these six thinking hats that you're going, ooh, we could do that. And just let me know where you're thinking of. <laughs> um, and like I said, if you want a copy of the show notes, just type in the word hats in the comment box and I'll cross my fingers at my IEP boxes bot <laughs> is answering you. So let me know if you have any questions so far um, because I want to make sure that we are um, addressing this so it like makes sense to you and it's like something that you think, you know, you could um, actually use in real life. And then at the end of the meeting, we're going to use that red hat again because we want to come back and talk about how people are feeling now. And this can be just a short kind of check-in. Um, it doesn't have to take that long, but I know in a variety of, um, you know, different kinds of consensus meetings, consensus building meetings, things like that, that checking back in with how people are feeling is like important. Of course you can always, you know, it's not like mandatory. Everybody has to report out. They can pass. But um, it just gives another kind of ending to it to come back to that gut level. So then you'd have to find your red hat. <laughs> ah, my hats are falling. And at the end of the meeting, you're going to actually... Recycle that red one and come back to it. Talk about the emotions. Talk about how people are feeling about the process. You could also <laughs> ask for feedback on what people felt about the process. Um, and then you're also going to come back with the blue hat. And that's, again, where the facilitator comes in. But everybody can chime in. And... Um, you're going to use the blue hat again and summarize what the discussion has been and summarize what decisions have been made because we don't want to walk out of this six thinking hat strategy session with, you know, feel good. Oh, isn't that great? We want to come out of that with not only feeling good, but also these hats are getting heavy but also with an action plan, with something that we're going to actually put in place. So what are you thinking? What are you thinking now? <laughs>
are you thinking like this could be some kind of um, strategy that maybe you could use in chime in and let us know because that is where the live shows are really beneficial is when you can give an example when we can brainstorm around that um but i would really encourage you to learn more about edward de bono's six thinking hat strategy um and use it and you know one of the things i was thinking of is we have need to <laughs> have more regular planning meetings with um, staff that support my son as an adult and make sure people are on the same page. And I was thinking this would be a great thing to do for Dylan's next meeting. And because Dylan is like a really visual person and he likes to be the facilitator at his own planning meetings, I thought I will actually bring the hats and Dylan can put the blue hat on and start the meeting out. And then he can put the white hat on and kind of direct questions and people will love it. And I think it will be much more engaging. Um, and so Rose says that it would certainly help to structure a meeting when tensions are high. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, it can be, I mean, you can, you know, depending on a visual reminder, you could have colored, you know, cards that you lay on the table and it's like, okay, this is, you know, our time for green hat thinking. We're gonna create some new ideas and do some brainstorming here. And everybody, that's what they're gonna be focused on at that time, instead of getting off on this, yeah, but no, that can't happen. And, you know, this downer Debbie sitting over there in the corner. Um, so what else, how else do you think you could use these? <laughs> I feel like I'm, I could also do um, a video for Caps for Sale. Do you know that kid's book, Caps for Sale? When I was a teacher, that was one of my favorite books I like to read. Plus your hair gets in your face when you wear six or seven hats. Um, I wanted to leave you with a quotation. Well, actually, I have the benefits and I'll put this in the show notes. But to me, the you know, these are some of the important um, benefits of using this six hat thinking strategy. Um, oops, and I do this. Okay, here we go. It does give that structured way of looking at problems. I think it really helps generate a lot more ideas and solutions than typically happens. Um, it there's because of the structure to it, it can help meetings be shorter and certainly more productive. And like Rose had commented, that it cuts down on that um, conflict and stress between people. Um, Often it's hard to think outside of that box and come up with other strategies, other ideas. So when we use the six hat thinking strategy, um, that can help us go beyond that thinking. And, you know, we start looking at challenges as opportunities and not just like roadblocks and the process, because we use the white hat and some of the others, it really helps us think clearly and objectively, and we, we identify all the different issues. So this is a quote from Edward de Bono, and he says, sometimes the situation is only a problem because it's looked at in a certain way. Look at in another way, the right course of action may be so obvious that the problem no longer exists. Now, wouldn't that be awesome? If instead of kind of our knee-jerk reactions to like, oh, I can't believe this is happening, that we one by one put on our six thinking hats and look at it from all perspectives and we would be able to come up with creative solutions that everybody can buy into. 
So that's the goal. And I hope that you guys will be enticed <laughs> to learn more about the six thinking hat strategy <laughs> and to use it. So Angela says, I feel like our team is mostly already doing this thus far. The next IEP meeting will be with our new SPED resource person. So finger crossed. So that is so cool, Angela. I love it. I love it. And so if that process is already kind of the culture at your school, it's like, hooray, <laughs> right? Um, and then you might think about, are there any little tweaks that you could maybe talk to the, you know, special ed teacher about and, you know, just say, our meetings go so wonderfully. I just love it. I just wonder if we could tweak this part or this part. Um, but that's great. We, we love it when teams um, see the benefit of really being a cohesive team, right? So I don't see <laughs> any other um, questions or comments, but if you think of things later, come back to this post and just type them in because I'm always coming back and um, answering or responding to your questions and comments. Share this video with friends that you know would be like, ah, I love this idea. Um, and remember, you don't actually have to wear the hats, but it just makes it more fun. <laughs> so until next Thursday at noon Mountain Time, I'm Charmaine Tanner. Go out and have a wonderful thinking hat day. Bye-bye. <laughs>